Welcome to the second video in our Let's Make an Equipment System in Unity tutorial series. I'm Matt with Night Run Studio and let's buckle up because we've got some work to do. Now if you followed along with our inventory tutorial series, you should already have the ability to create an empty item, give it a name, put on a sprite render or an image, add a box collider so that you can collect it, throw on the item script and provide all of the details you need for that item and then place it on the map. At that point, you should be able to collect the item and browse it in your inventory. Now at this point, we've created a beautiful equipment system, but we have no way to open it. And so in this tutorial, we're gonna look at how to make it so that you can access your equipment system with a button press and also collect different types of items, some which will route to your inventory system and others to your equipment. Up until this time, we've kept a pretty simple structure where you collect an item, it passes the information to your inventory manager, which then sends the item to the correct item slot. The data is stored there. And then if you drop an item, we just send the information in reverse back up to the manager and then down to a new item that gets respawned on the map. Now that we've added some equipment though, we're going to be adding a new piece to this puzzle and that is the equipment slot. So in this tutorial, what we're going to do is make it so that your inventory manager now decides based on what type of item you've collected, whether to send it to the item slot or to the equipment slot. All right, let's get started. So let's begin by going to edit project settings. And then in our input manager, we're going to rename a couple of these buttons. Now, if you are currently using all of the buttons available, you can add more by increasing the size. But I'm not using fire one, two or three. And so I'm going to use those. I'm just going to rename fire one to be inventory menu. Don't forget to pay attention to spaces and capitalization as you're doing this. And for my inventory button, I'm going to make the positive button the W key. Fire 2 then will be my equipment menu. And the positive button this time will be E. You can also add in other menus at this time if you want, like your atlas or character menu or whatever else you've added. At this point, we can head into our inventory manager. Now at the top of the script, you'll see we already have a public game object reference to our inventory manager. We're just gonna add another one now, this time to our equipment menu. You can also add your notebook or other ones at this time if you like. Now down in the update method, you'll notice that we currently have things set up so that if you push the inventory button, but the menu is already activated, the game will resume and the menu will get turned off and the opposite will happen if the menu is not already activated. Now, if we add an if and else statement like this for every single menu we add to our game, our update method is going to get very full very fast. So what we're going to do is just grab all of this information here. I'm going to cut it out. And we're going to create a new method called inventory. We can then paste that, that information inside of there. And we're going to make a couple of changes. First of all, rather than use this menu activated bool, we're going to get rid of that. And all we're going to do in here is instead we're going to check to see if inventory menu dot active self. So if it is active, we'll turn the menu back off and resume the game. Down here, then we can just go to a very simple else statement, meaning if the menu is not active, open it up. At this point, we're going to get rid of that menu activated bool altogether. So you can take those out. However, one change we want to add here is we just want, we want to make it so that if the menu is already active, we just turn all of the menus off. If you're adding a notebook or atlas, you would turn those off here as well. And also, if we happen to be currently in our equipment menu and we push the inventory button, we want the inventory to be turned on and the equipment menu to be turned off. Don't forget to put that on its own line. All right, now in order to call this, we are gonna head back up to our update and we will have to have an if and a check for input here. So input dot get button down and we'll just type in inventory menu. Now, if you push the button, we will then call the inventory method. All right, now we're just gonna do the same thing for our equipment menu. So we'll add one more check. This time though, instead of checking for the inventory menu, we will check to see if the equipment menu button has been pushed. And if so, we're going to call a new method called equipment. Now that's not gonna like that at first. That's just because we haven't created that yet. Now I'll grab this entire inventory method here. And we're just going to paste it down below. And with a little renaming, we can turn this into our equipment method. We'll have to make sure that it checks to see if the equipment menu is active. And if so, it will turn everything off. However, if it's not already active, then we want to turn the other menus off and the equipment menu on. One last thing while we're here, you can just scroll up to the top and we're going to get rid of this menu activated bool altogether. 
Back in Unity, we just need to click our inventory canvas, and there will now be a line here for our equipment menu, which we can grab and drag right into that box. Now when you play the game, you can collect your coffee, push your key in order to see it in the inventory, but you can also push your equipment key in order to open up that menu. So that's all well and good, but what happens now when I collect not just a coffee, but I also get some equipment? You'll notice that at the moment, all of that stuff is showing up in my inventory and nothing is making it to my equipment menu. So we're gonna have to solve this problem. To do that, we're gonna head into our inventory manager one more time. Now at the moment, every time we collect an item, we send over this add item, which has all of the items information. And that information is then sent over to our item slot. What we need to do right now is create a way so that our inventory manager can tell whether or not items belong in our inventory or in our equipment. To do this, we'll scroll down to the very bottom of our script below the last curly bracket. We're going to create an enumeration, which will essentially allow us to make a new variable type. Now here we're going to type public enum, we'll call it item type, and then just make a list of all the different item types you would like to have, both in your inventory and your equipment. Don't forget to put none at the end in case an item has no type. You'll then go to this last curly bracket here and put your semicolon on the outside. I know this is a little weird, but what we've essentially done here is created almost like a special variable type. And the reason we've put it outside of these brackets is that now it is going to be a global type. So we'll be able to access this from any other script. So for example, if I were to head to my item script right now, and at the very top here, I'm just going to create a new public item type. So similar to just creating a normal variable, except now we have the option of doing item type. And here I'm just going to call it item type. We'll save that. So now what can happen is when I click on my coffee, for example, I now have this item type box with a drop down menu of all the different things that I put into my item type. So I can label this as a consumable. I can then click on my sword and I can tell it that that is a main hand item. This will be incredibly helpful for our inventory manager to know whether or not items go into the inventory or the equipment. And later it will also help us to know which specific slot in the equipment to apply the item to on equipping. With that done, let's go back to our item script. Now the only other change we need to make at this point is if we go right down here to our on collision enter, at the moment we send over information like the name, quantity, sprite, and description. And all we wanna do now is just add item type. It's not gonna like that for now, but that's just because our inventory manager is not yet equipped to take that information. Now when we come to our inventory manager, we can scroll down to the add item, and we just wanna make sure that it is prepared to take in item type called item type. Now, of course, that's going to create a problem down here as we're gonna to need to pass that information along one further step to our item slot as well. All right, so at this point, what we can just do is at the very top of our add item, before we start looping through and sending everything over to the item slots specifically, because those are in our inventory, we'll just do a quick check to see if the item type matches the items that belong in our inventory. So if it's item type consumable, crafting, or collectible. And if so, we'll pass the item to an item slot. To make that happen, we'll just add our curly brackets, then select this for loop all the way down to and including the return statement and close bracket and paste them in. Essentially now things will work just like they always have. Now for the moment, it's not gonna like that because if it happens to be a different type of item, we haven't said what's gonna happen and there's no return value. Don't worry, we'll fix that in just a little bit. I'm just gonna save here. And now I just wanna go quickly to my item slot. A really quick way to do that is just to click on the add item here, right click and go to declaration. That will take us right to our item slot. And the only thing we have to do here to get this working is that we just need it to also be ready to take in item type. So we'll type in item type called item type. And for the moment, all that we wanna do here is we just wanna keep track of that information. We're not gonna do anything with it yet. And so we'll create a variable up at the top here with all of our other item data. And this one can actually be public as we'll need to access it later on. We'll make a public item type called item type. Now, when that information comes in, we can just head right down here and we can make it so that the stot item type is equal to the item type that has just been sent in. And for now, the information will just be stored here. We don't need to do anything special with it. And if you'd like to add a note here, we could say update item type. 
All right, so that's great. We've got the inventory working, but we still haven't actually done anything with our equipment. We haven't said what we want to happen. So let's go back to the inventory manager now. And so what happens if this isn't true? What happens if we collect an item that is not consumable, crafting, or collectible? Well, we need to have an else statement. So let's come down here and we'll type in else. The beauty of this is that we don't need to list all of the many slots that could possibly come up. And essentially what we want to do is make pretty much an exact copy of what we've got under this if statement. So I'm just going to grab that and we'll replace these two brackets here with all of that information. The only difference is that now we're not going to be sending this to an item slot. Instead, we're going to be sending it to our equipment slots. Now, obviously, this doesn't exist yet, so it's not going to like this. But first, let's just go through and make all of the changes. All right, now all those equipment slots are going to be pretty angry at us for the moment. And actually, you'll notice up here our add item is also a little bit angry. And that's just because we forgot to actually send the information of item type over to our item slot. All right, that cleans that up. You'll notice our add item is no longer angry because no matter what happens, there will be something being returned. However, we need to deal with these equipment slots. Let's scroll up to the very top. Right here where we have a public array for our item slots, we're also gonna make a public equipment slot array. And we'll call this one equipment slot. We've not yet written that script, so it's gonna be angry at us a moment longer, but we gotta start somewhere. So let's save that head back to Unity. All right, so back in Unity, we can now go to Create. We're going to make a new C-sharp script, and we'll call this one Equipment Slot. Now, our Equipment Slot is actually going to be very similar to our Item Slot. And so for the moment, let's head over to that script. Let's use Command-A and copy the entire thing. I'm going to come here. I'm going to select and delete this. We'll paste in all of our Item Slot data and we'll just need to make a couple of changes and then we'll actually be all good. First off, don't forget to rename it so that it matches the name you used in Unity. One other important change is that we will no longer need a max number of items integer. There will only ever be one piece of equipment in each slot and so we can delete that altogether. One other thing we can get rid of is this item description slot as our equipment system does not have one of these that's just in our inventory. All right, with that done, you can scroll down a little and you'll notice that our quantity is not liking us at all. But the beautiful thing is we actually don't need to do much here because our quantity gets really simple if there's only one item in each slot. And so I'm going to delete almost everything here. And we're just going to have two, sorry, three lines. The first line is just going to be this quantity is equal to, and if we've just added an item, it will always be one. Remember, we are in our add item method here. Below this though, we just need to let the inventory know that it is now full. All right, simple but beautiful. Now at the moment, if we go over to our inventory manager, at the top you'll notice our equipment slot is no longer angry at us as that script now exists. And if we scroll down, you'll notice that almost all of our red squigglies are also gone. However, there's one here that is in the add item and that's just because we copied over our data before we remembered to add the item type that we have up top here. And so we just need to make sure that when we add the item, we pass along the item type information. You can save that. Let's pop back over to your equipment slot for a moment. And if you scroll down, you'll notice that all is not quite well. We've got a fair bit of problems going on. And essentially what we can just do, we will be um, customizing these different methods later on so that they're a little different. But essentially for the equipment slot, we can actually just get rid of everything that has a red line. Then back in Unity, we can go into our equipment panel, click on the item slot, and add that new component. Now most of these slots here are actually going to stay empty as they will self-generate when an item is equipped. However, we do need to fill in the item image slot here by grabbing the item image. And we will also grab the selected item icon and put that in the selected shader slot. At this point, I'm just going to take my entire item slot and turn it into a prefab. You can do this by dragging it down anywhere in your assets menu. We're going to have a lot of item slots. In fact, I'm going to duplicate them now. And having a prefab means that we can simply go into our item slot prefab down here, make changes, and all of those changes will automatically apply to the rest of the item slot. For example, I'm gonna take our selected item icon and set it to inactive so that it doesn't always appear as though it is selected. Now, when I go back to my menu, you'll notice that they are all unselected. 
With that done, we can now click on our inventory canvas and go to our inventory manager. Now here you'll notice our item slot array is full of all of our item slots, and we can now fill the equipment slot array as well. I'm just going to lock the inspector, shift click all of our item slots here and drag them into the equipment slot box. All right, so now when I get into my game, I can collect my coffee, I can collect my sword, and when I hit E for equipment, you'll notice that the sword is in fact showing up in the correct inventory. And if I push my W, I have my coffee. All right, at the moment we can select the sword, but there's no data, it can't do anything. And we've still got a lot of work to do, but we're off to a great start. Hope you've found this tutorial helpful. If you have, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Until next video, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.